I heard cancer. You know, so uh, it doesn't okay. always have to be something that you hear, and though it's scary, it's something that can be a really good life lesson. How's she doing now? She's doing great. She's 75. Oh, good for She's her. She's still working. Hello. So, yeah. And how did her diagnosis change you? Well, it was interesting. She was actually visiting us in Westchester at the time, up in Connecticut, and um, she mentioned okay. that she saw urine, blood in her urine. Oh. Uh, and, you know, was... the... Well, the child to, becomes a parent all of a sudden, and you're telling your parents, hey, to, you need to get that uh, checked out. Kill, and she should know better. Uh, she worked for bladder a cancer. in her life, and it's always sometimes the doctors that do not Ross. surprisingly We're enough, right? We're the worst. So it, it was a great lesson, and it's important okay. to go to a doctor. Well, you got to observe yourself, because those are the clues we'll act on. So come on over here. We're going to walk you through a couple, of, couple of commonly missed cancer signs. Oh, well, signs. just... I don't want to miss any more. The first commonly missed cancer sign is arm and shoulder pain. Again, you walk into a doctor's office and you don't mention or volunteer any tips. They're not going to be that. Now that you know, I'm going to make sure I'll this will sink in. So, the reason I care about arm and shoulder pain is a lung cancer. Oh, I didn't know that. So, let me describe why they're related. And then I'm going to explain what kind of shoulder pain. I'm not talking about just a one-time little bit of thing back here. I'm talking about a deep aching. Have you ever smoked, by the way? I've tried, but I'm not a smoker. And I'm just saying this because a lot of people think I, I don't smoke, I won't get cancer. One in five women, one in five women who have never smoked, never tried it, all right. will still get lung cancer. So it can affect all of us. Let me show you why. Here's an animation. Normally, your lungs, right. of course, will give you symptoms if you have lung cancer, other problems of coughing and irritation, because they're big structures. But at the very top, you get very specific kinds of cancers that grow, and they invade the nerves. There's little yellow things here. Those nerves go down to your shoulder and your arm. When the cancer grows into there, it'll give you a deep aching sign, sort of a little bit behind on your shoulder, and that pain can go all the way down into your elbow area. As those cancer cells irritate those nerves, and because of that, this kind of Who cancer is one that we can actually treat if you find it if we have symptoms. So how long would you wait before with something like that that you would go to a doctor? You know, it's something chronic or... If you're having, generally speaking, symptoms for two weeks, someone needs to know about it. It doesn't mean we're going to do something about it, but someone needs to know about it. So same thing here. Especially if you haven't done anything to hurt your shoulder, you get this gnawing, aching pain, worry about it. Okay, next commonly missed cancer sign are night sweats. Pretty common problem. A lot of folks have night sweats. The reason I care about it is a sign of lymphoma. This is a very typical one that doctors actually are paying attention to these days. Here's the issue. If you, if you wake up and you are drenched in sweat, especially if your bedroom isn't overly heated, uh, and if you have a little bit of a low-grade temperature, like 100 degrees, not too high, then it's one of the things that I worry about. Especially for women after a certain age yeah. bracket. I mean, night sweats are kind of, Common. you don't want to admit it, but it happens, and you would think it's menopause so again this will be something that happens you know reproducibly it'll happen you know, a week or two in a row and you start to think because most night sweats won't happen every night if they're from menopause if they're from hormones but one of the little added tool i'm going to give you today with lymphoma is how to examine yourself so except for if you don't mind i'm going to show you with take these three fingers i want everyone in the audience to do this if you don't mind take the three fingers the middle fingers of your hand those pads are very sensitive and very soft you're not going to push hard and you're going to feel for lymph nodes and very specifically you're going to feel beneath your jawbone everyone do it this is where you'll get swelling if you have a sore throat. But we're looking for nodes that are big even when you don't have a sore throat. You're going to move back along the jawline to the very back of the jaw, and then work your way down along that big muscle called the sternocleidal mastoid, this big muscle right there. And you work your way down, you'll end up on your clavicle right in here. And that's the area where oftentimes we'll see little nodes. So you're going to find those out. People, right as you do, are going to be panicking all over the country because we do sometimes get nodes. But if you have uh, nodes that are changing, you need to call someone. This is one of the most treatable problems we have. And you know what? It's a lot easier to treat it when we know it early on. Uh, okay. well, how do they treat that, by the way? Is it? Yeah, well, depending on what kind, there's a different kinds of lymphomas. We can give radiation and chemotherapy, but you don't have to yeah. operate on lymphoma because it's basically in the blood and lymph nodes. Oh. So we, but that makes <gasps> oh. it sensitive, too. It can't hide anywhere. So Coffee you can't get away from it, so take it out. Okay, next commonly missed cancer and... sign is black stool. May I ask a personal question? I think you're going to anyway, yes. so... <laughs> you're right. Well, go ahead and answer it. What color is your poop? <laughs> um, I would... Well, color? Color. Brown. Brown. Question is, why does brown poop become black poop? Because it's black stool we're looking for, especially... Blood. If it's Dry blood. It's a sign of esophageal cancer. Now, here's why we're worried about it. If you have a little bit of bleeding from the esophagus, that's below your mouth, so you're not going to cough it up. You won't know it's there. There's no pain really there. That blood gets digested 
When you digest blood and it mixes with the normal poop, it turns it into a tarry black stool. And that's what we're looking for specifically with this. So you'll also know it because it tends to have a pretty strong odor. It's also a sign of ulcers and other issues in your intestines, but very specifically I worry about it in terms of some kinds of cancer. So if you see it? Yeah, that you don't wait for two weeks of that. That you call today. I got tarry poop coming out. I'm going to open up the schedule. All right. And the next missed cancer we're going to talk about is tipped off by irregular periods. Are you so regular? I am. Good. But I'm getting to the age where it might not be. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so a couple of things about periods. We, most of us don't know what a regular period really is. I'm going to define that. And the reason you have to know it is because it'll help you figure out if you have endometrial cancer. So let's go through this. Yeah, if you're having uh, a, a period that's fairly regular because you're still premenopausal, it, any bleeding in between your periods, any day's worth of bleeding is an abnormal period. Something happened that's wrong. If you're, if you're after menopause, you should never have any blood coming out, period, down below. And the other thing to look for, of Hello? course, is if your menstrual cycles it have the menstruation is really heavy one day. And again, it can change a little bit, but not a lot Come between in. cycles. Those are the kinds of clues. You may have something growing in the endometrium, and that could be irritated by hormones and begin to bleed a lot more. Come so in. That's why given today, just knowing what normal is for you is a good place to start. All of these clues are based on knowing what normal is. If you understand what normal is, you can give us a clue to a change. It makes us a lot better off of taking care of you. All right, so communication. So if you something, you have a question, ask the doctor. Yes. But, ask, but be targeted with your question based on what your signs are. Thank you very much for being Thank here. Thank you. All season long, I'm going to give you tools that you need to cut the cancer risk. I'll be right back. Next, a patient who refuses medical treatment. The next step should be to install a permanent battery-operated pump. I'm not sure that I could live with it. We may just say goodbye to his wife for the last time. Real life stories from the front lines. Next. We are bringing healthy back this season and want you to bring it too. Grab your prescription pad for fun and sign up for free tickets today. You can go to DrOz.com slash tickets and sign up. The legendary Regis Philbin. Why do I come here? <laughs> On the pain that has him worried. Any health issues? I sense a little fire developing inside him. All new Dr. Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. Dr. Oz is bringing healthy back. Join the conversation and get social at DrOz.com, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.